State Studio, the sports media palace of Mid-America, the Wolf of Center Street. Here's your host, John Neighbor. And welcome in to the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and appreciate all of you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon as we got a fun-filled show for you here on a Thursday. A lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to discuss, especially in the landscape of the Razorbacks as baseball took care of business in what was a hard-fought series against the Texas Tech Red Raiders there in the midweek. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well as get to some other national news too. And it seems like one thing that people can't get enough of is Razorback basketball, John Calipari, waiting when the next player is going to pop, when the next thing's going to happen. But I'll tell you what, we're going to mix it up a little bit and do something a little bit differently here on the show today because we actually have an in-studio guest that's uh, been a friend for a long time, first time on this show, but not the first time on one of my shows. And, of course, his name is the only C on campus that you need to know and it is coach Matt Zimmerman. what's going on coach John good to be with you man I was thinking as you were saying all that I, I remember back in the days when I talked to you with through the Fort Smith station slash yeah. Fayetteville Northwest Arkansas of course all the time that you were at the buzz and all the shows we did usually on Tuesdays mm -hmm. so it's good to have you back in NWA and enjoyed coming to the opening of Natty State Sports and we are, get to meet and talk to your parents and oh, yeah. your brother and uh, the whole crew, and that was nice. That was a good. That was nice to see everybody here and kind of getting you back going. Yeah, it's been great so far, and I know that uh, just being up here and, and being in downtown Fayetteville, and you know the setup that we have is awesome here at Natty State, and appreciate okay. your support always. Yeah, and, and of course nice. the the things that's uh, that's happened, and I'm I'm curious because you know I was, I was thinking about what are we going to talk about today, and it's almost like nothing's really happened here recently yeah. in the, the basketball landscape. And of course you're you're a Razorback fan yeah. of all sports, but yeah. I mean, coach, can you even put a how do you explain? Oh. How, can you even put into words what your situation with the Arkansas situation, yeah. what has been like over the past few weeks? No, it's just been so crazy. And, you know, really Monday, April the 1st, coming into work and just thinking about things, Coach Muss was still here, but I just had this feeling, you know, and there's been the rumors for a week or two before that, but really that Monday, April 1st, thinking – if, if Muss is going to stay, we'll know by this week because we're going into the Final Four. It can't stretch much more than that. But just not knowing, and then nothing really ever quieted down. April, Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, the Thursday, and then Thursday he announces he's going to USC. And it really wasn't until Wednesday afternoon that I heard that, like, hey, he's going to USC. This is going to happen. And that was the first time that it was like coach is going to leave and then find out for sure on Thursday – and it was a whirlwind, you know, and I remember going over, you know, the basketball offices and that's when you're cleaning out coaches and stuff, you know, the ones that knew that he was going to be leaving, cleaning stuff out. And then Friday I took off to the NABC convention, National Association of Basketball Coaches, which was at the Final Four. And unbeknownst to me that that I got there Friday, Hunter had already been down there on Thursday, you know, getting work yeah, done. Yeah. So he'd already yeah. anticipated he was already getting work done. And I think Hunter ended up coming back Friday night. I was supposed to come back Monday. I wasn't staying for the championship game. I usually go to the semis on Saturday, and I end up changing my flight to come back. And that whole thing, just the massive amount of rumors those few days, and uh, it was crazy. You know, and at one point, people were saying it. It was Will Wade, and I had a nephew saying, Will Wade, Will Wade. And Will's a friend of mine. We have one yeah. of the most unique relationships because uh, we're very different. Mm -hmm. He's gotten busted on some things. I was always a straight guy, and I've, we've always been friends yeah. because of defense and pressing and trapping and full-court pressure. And I would call him. I called him that Friday night, that Saturday night, and that Sunday night. And, I was, and I'd say, everyone in Arkansas thinks you're about to be named the head coach. <laughs> He's like, Coach, I've not talked to Hunter. I've not talked to him. I think Hunter, you know, maybe there had been a little conversation with his agent, but his right. agent was probably reaching out to us. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Will was a hot name. But I remember one of my nephews called me. I think it was Sunday. And by this time, you were already hearing it was going to be Coach Cal. But the first time I heard Coach Cal's name was Saturday during the semifinals. And so the person that told me was a national person. And that. They were right on him, but they were right, wrong on this part. They said one of two things is going to happen. Y'all are trying to circle back to Chris Beard or you're going to get John Calipari. And I was like, it, 
I was just so, you know, I, that was on Saturday. Wow. And so, of course, half of that ended up being very true yes. about it. And so uh, really interesting. You know what's uh, unique about it, John? What's that? The national media knew Coach Cal by Saturday night, you know, or felt like it was a possibility on Sunday, but none of them really would run with it. Uh, one of them told me I've, he had hundreds of thousands of followers, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, I can't run the risk of putting this out and it not happening. I would lose a lot of credibility. I cannot put this out. And this was Sunday, several hours before Wes Moore put it out. Right. Nothing against Wes by any means, but this this national guy was like, I think this is going to happen, but I can't. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I thought that was unique, but what a crazy day and – so much, so much props. Uh, Hunter, uh, John Tyson, man, you know, it don't happen without John and whoever else. You know, you hear Stevens, you hear Joan, you hear all these different names. Appreciate whoever was involved in all that, financially, spiritually, mentally, because it's big deal to get to get Coach Cal at Arkansas. It's big. Well, and I, and I was thinking about you mentioned just the surrealness of it all. I, I was still in disbelief when I started kind of hearing about it a little bit. I was like. Oh, there's no way. Like it kept, there's just no way. It's not Coach Cal coming to Arkansas. But it was also unique because we've talked about it. I know, Coach, you know, Coach Eddie Sutton left for Kentucky. And yeah. that was something. 1985. Yeah, 1985. And I remember uh, hearing about him saying that it was one of the decisions he regretted yeah. uh, later. But Arkansas just hasn't had a lot of coaches leave on their own. It's either the, no. the, they've either not had the success that they needed or whatever. But then you had must leave for that. And now, I don't know if it's the same way with you. And again, love Coach Muss. I do. I had a great relationship yeah. with Coach Muss, but it's almost like people just kind of have now, it's like, Cal is everything. It's like, yeah. it, it, is, it has been about the best case scenario you could have for a coach leaving on his own fruition after having success. Yeah. And now you see something like Coach Cal coming in. It's a great transition for Hog fans to still maintain yeah. their excitement, if not more so. And it, you're right. And it really could be win win for everybody. You know, depending on how much success coach has, because he wanted to, Coach Muss wanted to go out west. He'd been that way for a long time, and he he had talked about it. And so for him to get to go back, you know, I I talked to him on the Tuesday after he left, and he was going to a Lakers game that night, and that's all oh, he could yeah. talk about. And they were playing the Warriors, and he was just so excited, and that that's what he's about. Uh -huh. he, he loves that. So we wish him all the best, and it was a entertaining, fun, exciting, up and down, up and down, five years, though, but some great wins. And those three really good runs that we'll always remember were nice to have. And so, but to get Coach Cal in here, you know, you talk about Hall of Famers that are in the bath, not the College Basketball Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame. And, of course, Nolan Richardson's in there, Eddie Sutton, Sidney Moncrief, and now Coach Calipari. But you talk about the active coaches in that Hall of Fame. I think it's just Bill Self, it's incredible. Tom Izzo, Patino, if he's still in it, and, and uh, Coach Cal. And so it, it's amazing to have a, a Hall of Famer here and a, and a guy that's going to have us in the national championship hunt. And people say, what should our expectations be? We don't have any players yet. We, well, we're, he's going to be building that very quickly. Those names are going to come. They're going to start popping. And I think expectations will and should be high. When you're, you're Coach Cal, oh, yeah. you've won a national championship, and he's been to – you know, the NCAA's got him at four Final Fours. He's been to six unofficially Final Fours. This is a guy that's, you know, cut one, four, six regionals. That That's high expectations at Arkansas. And, you know, we're different than Kentucky, but we have high expectations here too. Yeah, and now the fact that he is here and knowing that it's a situation that you can win a high level at Arkansas, you can win a national championship at Arkansas. It's been proven, and it's still yeah. to this day. So it's a matter of now that Cal's the guy, how, how do you see – the overall culture, the overall team, the overall program just changing because it was no, already man. solid. It was already healthy. It, right. It's always, but how does it change now that he's the head coach? I think that we were at a certain level, even to, but like the Mike Anderson era is at a certain level where you're winning in regular season, but can't make a run. You don't make a run. And then coach, uh, coach came in and he had some good teams and, you know, okay in the league, never you know, had a second-place finish in the league, but had some that during the last couple of years where you finished 10th and 11th. But you have these great postseason runs. Now with Coach Calipari, it's the whole thing. You're going to have top recruiting every year. You're going to be number one or number two or number three in the country in recruiting. We've not been that. Yeah, We're going to be that now immediately. And then he wins conference championship. And he hadn't won one since 2020 in the SEC and then you're also going to be winning conference tournament championships. He won six of them at Kentucky. 
He hadn't won one, I think, since 2018. This is a guy that wins the conference. He wins the conference tournament. And, oh, by the way, he goes to Final Fours, Final Eights, Sweet Sixteens. So it's the whole package. To answer your question, it elevates everything. It elevates expectations. There's going to be more money in the program. We're going to bring in more revenue. Um, you know, right now, the athletic department, uh, it'll be interesting how it all shakes, but you can do a lot of things with basketball right now to produce more revenue stream, whether it's get him out to donors on the road, people are going to donate. Uh, if you have to, if, if it ends up being where they raise, you know, different things, you're going to be able to. The demand is going to be there because of this legendary basketball coach, and he's not at Kentucky anymore. He's at Arkansas, which is different. It's taken a little bit of time to get, you know, I got to sit down with him the day he got here, me and Quinn Grovey, and it was weird. It was unique because yeah. go back to 30 years ago, us competing against him, UMass, Arkansas. You know, you talk about Memphis, Arkansas. You talk about, for me personally as a coach, not the Razorbacks, but UAB, Memphis, yeah. three times a year, most years, conference championship Epic games. Epic games. Epic game. UAB, Memphis. Memphis, Missouri. We were the last game he ever coached in Memphis. We beat them in a 2009 NCAA tournament. And then Arkansas, Kentucky. And there's a lot of, there's been a lot of ties with Coach Cal to the Arkansas Razorbacks and a lot of games played. So it was weird because I didn't love him. I didn't love him at all. I did not either. Yeah, that's right. And so all of a sudden now he's, uh, he's one of my bosses. So I love him <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, uh, but you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it is an adjustment period. But at the same time, he didn't love us either. You nope. know, he didn't. He wasn't in love with us. And so it's it's so neat for him to be here and watch all that uh, go away and, you know, the, the fences down and now everybody together trying to pull for a common cause, which the Razorbacks win basketball games. Yeah, and I was thinking, like, back in – I was having to delete a few tweets to make sure. Uh, did you go back and – I, 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 I probably should do – look at that. I did. Did you go – but did you have anything you needed to delete? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I had a few things that I uh, How long needed it take to delete. You to do that? That's a lot because you you know that's a lot. Of, yeah, you got to go I, way well, back. I, I went into the Twitter advanced search and I just with my username oh. used the terms of Cal or Calipari or Kentucky. You know, just kind of seeing yeah. what I saw. And it was funny because when, when I was in the front row of the student section during sure. you when you were coaching sure. and everything, yes, uh, I went back and saw some friends. We we made some pretty. Nasty signs uh, for uh, Coach Cal when he came in, and so you I should have left those on there. Did you delete it all? I, did, I didn't delete those because I was like, delete. I was proud of those. those put, right. That put a lot of work into it, but uh, but that's just what's the the crazy narrative is like. It, it, everything's turned on it, and you know, it's there's maybe people that still don't really like Cal Perry here, but it's just amazing how you may hate a guy, you may get frustrated with the guy, but when he's your guy, it, 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 it changes everything. And I think it's always about. I think Tyler Spoon, former Razorbacks in here, he's like, you never hate somebody you don't know. And it's like everyone knows because Cal was very successful. And that's I think right. that that's what helps people, Razorback fans, being like, hey, yeah, we used to hate this guy, but we hated him because he was really good. Right. And he, he was a great coach and was ahead of his time. But now that he's our guy, he wins games. He's going to be the most beloved person here in the state as long yeah. as he keeps winning. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about, winning. Yeah. And the Razorback fans want to win, period. And for the most part, they're going to be with you win or lose for a while. And then they're going to then they're going to be with you win or win. Yeah. And so you got to win, and uh, that that is very much the, 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 everything here. You know, Alan Brummett uh, told me this on Sassy. Yeah. He, 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 Alan was telling me how uh, he 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 either made this up or he had seen it to where it was like the scene from Major League, where you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, where Wild Thing and the third baseman, you know, they were getting ready, to, they were mm -hmm. celebrating a win, Should but he I, punched him. Yep. He punched him because they'd had a little something going on with, with, yeah, the, with, with the woman with the wife, or a wife. Yeah. Or and he punched him, and then he got him up and he gave him a hug, and that's kind of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've had to we've had to throw punches at him, he's had to throw punches at us in this Arkansas Kentucky battle and all the other battles for thirty years, but now it's a hug, yeah. and so you know we're we're all glad he's here now. It's it's so exciting. It is. You know we are now that. Like I said, Saturday of the Final Four slash Sunday of the Final Four. Now we're, we're already towards the end of this week, and it's still what everyone's talking about nonstop. Mm -hmm. And we've got the best baseball team in the country, or one of, and we just had spring football. you got a lot going on. Everybody just wants to talk about Coach Cal and Razorback basketball. And, you know, I was talking to Hunter the other day and complimenting him. We were sitting there visiting and talking about the whole deal, and – it's worth like a billion dollars. Easily. The attention the Razorbacks got through that Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the national championship game, 
uh, the whole time on ESPN on Monday of the national championship game talking about Coach Cal to Arkansas. That's, that's, be, that's a billion yeah. or two billion or three billion. The worth is unbelievable for this for this university, for students wanting to come here, for the excitement for our current students and the pride the alums have, which obviously leads into more money for the school. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, I sometimes can live in recency bias, yeah. but I look at it as I can't think of another coaching hire made in the college sports landscape ever that did this and had an impact like this in, the, in a national scale because you had the national championship game going on, Yeah, and that wasn't getting the people's attention, yeah. which I know that was something that Cal did not want getting out, but it did. Yeah. Can you compare it Gosh. to a coaching hire in college sports history that you've been around mm -hmm. that could – it at least address the impact no. or compare? I mean, it was a big deal, you know, with Saban to Alabama, but he'd had that little stretch at Miami where, he, yeah. you know, and but he was a national championship coach at LSU. That was a big deal when Alabama hired him, but mm. you didn't know how that would go. Yeah. Petrino but, from Atlanta was yeah. more of a negative reaction yeah, that people that's gave. that's right, because that how was, that went down. Yeah. But you just – not many. You you make a good point. You can argue it for yeah. sure that it is the, because there's just not been so many that moved everything – Way back, way before your day, John Wooden was the legendary coach at UCLA when he left. It was a big deal. And they brought in Gene Barto, who had been at Memphis. Oh, yeah. And it was a big deal that Gene Barto became the head coach at UCLA. And by the way, he went like national championship game and maybe like Sweet 16 and got ran out of Dodge because he couldn't do what John Wooden had done. That was a big deal back those days, but that was in the 70s. So that's that's so many years ago. But there's not been hardly anything move in college football or basketball, a coach changing jobs to to move it like this. When Eddie Sutton left here was a big deal to our fans, and he said he would crawl to Kentucky. That hurt a lot of people's feelings. That was a big deal in 1985. And back to your point, no one else has left. No, no basketball coach has left. They've gotten fired. And, and then – with football, no one's left since Ken Hatfield, which I guess was in '89. Yeah. And they were on him. He'd just gone 10 and 2 and 10 and 2. He was not getting fired. He was safe. But people were on him because he ran the ball nonstop all the time. He had Quinn Grovey. You know, they weren't going to throw it a whole lot. It was run the option, run, run, and we would lose. And people went crazy. And it shocked a lot of people that a guy that was on our undefeated 64 team would leave. But he yeah. had faced a lot of criticism. And he went 10 and 10, 10 and 2, 10 and 2. And Clemson offered him a big contract. And he said, I'm going to Clemson, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. And yeah. that's the only guys that have left on their own. Everybody else gets fired. And uh, speaking of that, you know, assistant coach, I was a lifelong assistant other than high school. I was in college, I was a lifelong assistant. And you know how many assistant coach uh, retirement parties I've ever been to? I couldn't imagine very many. Yeah, none, none. <laughs> yeah. There's no retirement parties ever for Division ones. You just get fired or something happens and you can't get another job, so you're like – Okay, I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it out there for, for the perception. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I just decided to hang it yeah, up. Yeah, I decided to hang it up. It's my I don't time. have a job, but I'm retiring. Yeah. Well, and, and that's kind of the cool thing, too, and what's unique is because, you know, college basketball has changed. Uh, college sports in general just changes so much. And I remember so many people were like, oh, man, I, he's, I, I think Cal even said in a statement, he's like, I just met with the whole team. There is no team. Because there's nobody that on the roster. That was a great quote, oh, wasn't it? Was it? Awesome. It was awesome. Again, he knows how to do it, man. He knows how to run the room right. and, and do all that. But uh, as of right now, where it stands, Arkansas does have a big Z because uh, big you know, Z, they, yeah. I know he's, which you saw him at mm -hmm. Kentucky, and yes. of course, uh, they're going to be adding. There's going to be a roster, folks. Don't worry, they're going to put together a roster. Yeah. It's not like it's just going to have a couple players. But just what do you make of him coming to Arkansas and what he can do? Because there was excitement surrounding him, and also maybe how do you see Cal approaching the roster? balancing between transfers, freshmen, yeah. all of that? Well, that's a good question. And I, I know that Curtis and Scotty and them have talked about that a lot. And, and it's definitely how it's going to be. It was going to be kind of four parts is how he's going to build it. And number one was his players from Kentucky that played this past season. And the first guy comes from that group. And it'll be interesting. Will that be another guy or will it be three guys or will it be four guys? We don't know yet. And then the second is the signees at his school. Used to be you couldn't even say that without thought of NCAA problem. Now yeah. you can say it because they've already all got released. It's just and they're all, Yeah, which, you know, they're all out of their national letter of intent. So they're going to go somewhere. And so he will have some of those. And then the third way may not be any of this, but normally it would be anybody that can stay yeah. at your new job. And right now it doesn't 
look like much of anything, if any, you know. So there's still a couple guys that are in the portal, about three of them that have not done anything yet that played at Arkansas last year. And then the fourth way, obviously, being the portal. I think Coach Cow traditionally will be about three or four guys a year in the portal. It won't be what we've been used to, seven or eight guys every year. Now, this year, there'll be more because mm-hmm. he's having to build a roster. So that's the four ways he's going to build it, and it'll be interesting how many come from – each one of those four different areas. The portal will have quite a few for it said and done because I know he is really excited about some guys who are in the portal that he didn't coach at Kentucky and they weren't signees at Kentucky. They were at other schools. And I do know just from talking to people in college about there's a lot of guys he's talking to that have played college basketball other places. So it's going to be exciting when those guys get get marked down and sign a financial aid agreement with the Razorbacks. Well, Coach, uh, just I know fans have their own expectations, but – I expect greatness from Coach Cal at Arkansas. I expect should. that not only the tournament appearances, but to take from your perspective. He didn't get in the Hall of Fame by getting beat in the second round. Uh, no, 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 not at all. So for you and the next few years, how do you see the expect or what's your expectation for this basketball program? It will definitely be higher and higher after year one. Now, not that he can't end up putting together a team that they might win the whole thing first year. It's possible. Yeah. But it's going to be more down the line where you he's been here, he's got his legs under him, his staff's got continuity. You know, that's another thing with him that'll be different than with Coach Musselman. He's never been a big staff full makeover guy. Right. His guys, I remember a guy he had forever, John Robick, was with him, UMass, Memphis, Kentucky. He's not there man, now, yeah. John Robick. Uh, of course, Kenny Payne was there for a long time with him as an assistant. Uh, Antigua's been with him for a long time at different spots. And, you know, we don't know who all for sure is going to be end up here or not. You know, Bruiser, UMass, all the way back to UMass with him, and, and uh, Flint. So there, there's a lot of guys. Chuck Martin was with him a long time before. And was Chen. it uh, Tony Barbie too? Yeah, right? Tony there. Barbie was there forever. Yeah, we remember him. Head coach at Auburn. Yeah, that was kind of this beginning of a little bit of. I don't think there was ever really much of a any animosity so much when the coaches they were just competitive. Pro Arkansas was good back then. I mean, first time we play him, we're the defending national champ, and we've got everybody coming back. And he, he talked about that in the press conference, mm-hmm. and he blew us out. Mm-hmm. They had a great team, and uh, they they were outstanding and beat us. He had great players at UMass, and ended up a couple of years later in the Final Four at UMass. Um, but he's he's always had such talented players and big players, long, athletic, big guys. I remember going with – I remember Bobby Portis and I walking out of Rupp Arena in 2015. They just basically – we were pretty good. I remember Finished that, second yeah. league. And we're walking out, and they'd had that incredible team from Willie Cauley-Stein, Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker's coming off the bench, the Harrison Twins, Julius Stupid. Randall. I mean, it, it, it was incre- yeah. an incredible team. But 2015, walking out of uh, Rupp Arena – and Bobby was just like, he'd just been beat up, beaten. He played pretty good. And we lost the game. And he said, and he was McDonald's All-American. And he said, Coach, that is the biggest, most athletic full team I've ever gone against. Everywhere you turn, there was a Kentucky guy flying around. And we hung in there. They lost, lost the game. And just they were so talented year after. And they had kind of dropped a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. the last yeah. they had just not been as good since 2020. They were still good. I mean, they beat us the last two times they've come to Bud Walton. It's hard to yeah. win in here. So he was still winning games. He just wasn't making those runs anymore. And thankfully for us, those last two games worked out um, because he has a good taste in his mouth about Bud Walton or because he won in here. Yeah. And then the last two games he ever coached at Kentucky, they went our favor because they were playing pretty well. They won at Tennessee the 18th and final game of the conference season. They went into Tennessee, who was the outright league champ, and beat Tennessee. And that ain't easy. No. That's a hard place to play. So, just – that was like a month ago. They were running high. Amazing. And you talk about playing A&M on Friday of the conference tournament in front of about 15, 16, 17,000 Big Blue Nation. They're going to beat A&M. Yeah. They didn't. And then they're going to play the Oakland Raiders, and you know that they're going to beat Oakland. And yeah. Greg Campy's a great coach. I'm kidding about the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're playing Oakland and Greg Campy, and – they lose that game. Those two games brought John Calipari here. Mm-hmm. Texas A&M and Oakland. Yep. Because that was a sour taste to end their season. 
and also St. Peter's and some of the other losses added on. If the year they lost to St. Peter's, if they'd have gone to the Final Four, he'd still be there. Yeah, he'd still be there. And if he would have, if he'd ended up losing this year to Oakland, but he'd have beat St. Peter's, he would still probably be there. Yeah. But the, you add all that together, Jack Gulkey, <laughs> he's here. Jack yeah. Gulkey should be on Natty State Sports. Yeah, we need to get him on. He, thank, thank you. Jack that. Gulkey is put. Coach John Calipari at the University of Arkansas. I mean, it, he's not the number one reason, but he's up there. Yep. Between that and then the the I guess the SMU situation that kind of started the whole domino the whole effect. thing. How yeah. about that? I mean, who'd have ever thought Rob Lanier yeah. getting fired at SMU would impact everything? Kentucky and Arkansas. Yeah, Kentucky and Arkansas, and then you think about the USC angle and just everything. Yeah, it kind of came a domino effect so domino. but it's been it's been a wild thing so uh yeah. well coach again we appreciate it. before uh, you get out of here though uh with the, i know you work with the razorback foundation you guys are always staying busy yeah. so how's the situation there i'm sure it's a very good positive. vibe over there yeah, yeah yeah so how's everything it, going and kind of what's here in the near future for it? it's such a positive thing and it, it'll help all razorback sports when you have a legend oh, yeah. like this coming in here there will be more people making donations there'll be more revenue produced he's such a big deal it's going to help all areas of Razorback basketball, Razorback, it'll help. It'll seep into Razorback football. It'll seep into Razorback soccer, Razorback tennis, Razorback baseball. It's going to help when you have this kind of guy roaming around your city, running around your state, but running around your campus and the university, and it, he's going to have a huge impact. Huge oh, yeah. impact. Finances are going to help. We still need money. There's always – I hadn't heard a coach yet, John. I'm still waiting on that first coach somewhere in America to say, hey – I've got plenty of NIL money. We yeah, don't need stop. any more. Yeah, please, please stop. Stop. stop giving. We're done. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that either. <laughs> hadn't heard that, and I don't think we're going to. So the Razorbacks always need more revenue, needs more money. It's expensive. The SEC is a big deal, and uh, it's expensive to compete in this at this level. Yeah, and it's only going to keep getting better. Now Texas and Oklahoma are in it too. I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. it's nonstop. But it's okay. Remember, Jerry Jones, he's, he's got it. Man. He's just doubling <laughs> everything. So. We, if he does, we sure thank Mr. Jones as always. i tell you what our Jones Center – is beautiful oh, it's awesome. in the athletic department. He did so nice with the donations to get that done. So we definitely appreciate everyone that don't. But Mr. Tyson, wow. I mean, I, it just doesn't happen without John Tyson. Nope. So that's a big deal for our university. And uh, now let's go win a whole lot of basketball games. Let's make it all worthwhile. Let, let's get it done. Before we go, you yeah. know, the, the no one's gone undefeated. And we're not going to go undefeated. I'm not saying that. No. But no one's gone undefeated since – Bob Knight and Indiana Hoosiers in 1977, 1976. And now then they only went 32 and 0. Now you got to go 40 and 0. So it's that's eight more games that you got to win. That's the difference. But that team, I coached against them. That team, Kentucky, 38 and 0. That that was a team all season. You just felt like Coach Calipari, they're gonna, they're gonna go undefeated. This mm -hmm. is and they were in the national semifinals, Wisconsin. They were two wins away from 40 and 0. And so that's what you're bringing in here. That's your coach. That's a pretty, that's pretty special. And I remember real quick. I was, I'm not sure you remember better than me. Like any other, it's just timing. Any other year, Arkansas wins the SEC outright yeah. in the regular season because yeah. that was Arkansas's best team under yeah. Coach Anderson, yeah. and they they had all the everything put yeah. together. But couldn't just, catch them. Yeah, couldn't catch Kentucky. It. And it's just again, timing is everything. Because any right, other season, they probably team, win. That team there would have won these last two or three to me SEC championships. They're the, oh, the current deal for sure. But that was that Kentucky team was so loaded and so talented, so big. They they were special. But yeah. that, that that man that took that team to thirty eight zero before they lost in the national semis. That's our guy. He's now. here. That's pretty special. Yeah, it is. Well, coach, we really appreciate you coming in in studio and hanging Loved out. It. It's always great to talk basketball with you. Need to start. We'll start doing this more. Yeah, Have absolutely. You hang out. I'll stop by. I love to talk to Curtis and Scotty and you and come up and see you guys. You're in a beautiful place here. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, well, we appreciate it, coach. Uh, have fun uh, talking about basketball. And it, again, it is fun right now. So uh, let's let's make it as fun as possible and keep it happening. So, but uh, coach, we appreciate it. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back. We'll have more of the John Neighbor Show. And yes, we'll address this Jerry Jones stuff that's going around. I can't wait to talk about that. But we'll get to that and a lot more coming up next. So stay with us. We're not done yet right. either. So don't be satisfied. We're not done. Right. Hey, John, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrats. I added two parter if that's okay. You mentioned Arkansas. Eric, um, why do you always talk about Arkansas? But go ahead. Well, why do you always talk about Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go with you, Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on.
<laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you've got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile! Smile! Okay? Hey, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking! Big Red, so excited! Big Red! Oh! Oh! Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys, welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. <laughs> Welcome back into the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. Appreciate Coach Matt Zimmerman joining us in the previous segment. Talking a little basketball because like he said and like we know here, that's what everybody wants to talk about. They're all about the basketball program and about John Calipari and what he's got going on too. So we appreciate him talking more about it with us and uh, we'll get to some of your comments here in uh, just a little bit too, folks, because I know a lot of you are wanting to talk about this Jerry Jones thing. I do too, I'll admit. I want to talk about it because it is kind of funny. It is kind of fascinating. And uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. But, of course, I want to remind everybody that here at Natty State Sports, we are brought to you by Signature Bank here in the great state of Arkansas. They are a privately held boutique bank that is redefining the banking experience of our entire region. And they really make sure that they take care of you no matter if it's your personal banking or your business banking, everything when it comes to banking and your finances, they make sure they take care of. They're personally invested in you. They're business-minded with you. They're community-focused with you. And they also are just the right size bank where they're not too big, not too small. They are perfect for everything that you need, especially when it comes to being forward-thinking. See, we like to be forward-thinking here in United States sports, obviously. We're very forward-thinking people. And that's why the partnership with Signature Bank makes so much sense and why it's a perfect mold between two forward-thinking entities. And you want to make sure you're doing banking with the right people. So do it with Signature Bank. You can find out more information with them by going to Signature.Bank. That's www.signature.bank. And you can get more information there. You can just visit one of the easy and convenient locations that they have across the state of Arkansas. And as always, we appreciate Signature Bank being a part of what we have going on here at Natty State Sports, the official bank of Natty State Sports. All right. So, uh, again, we have people that are really jumping in and, and chiming in about this deal <laughs> of uh, Jerry Jones. And for those of you who have not been aware, or maybe you've been living under a rock or something like that, there was a tweet that was put out by, I should say tweet, a Discord message, however you want to put it. There was a guy named Trilly Donovan, which if you don't know who Trilly Donovan is on social media, especially Twitter, he is a college basketball insider. Uh, I don't really know him personally, but I do know that he's a guy that has a lot of connections and has a lot of things to say and usually is pretty spot on when it comes to some of the reports and some of the things that are coming out. And yesterday, he had talked about that he had been hearing that Jerry Jones, the Razorback guy, the man, the owner and GM and president of the Dallas Cowboys and Razorback alum, had been offering the Kentucky signees and players double the NIL, what they were making 
uh, are going to be offered at Kentucky for them to come to Arkansas. Now, when this got put out there, I, I was I was really cracking up laughing because I'm like, okay, surely this is not going to be something people take up on, start talking about, start taking seriously. Well, lo and behold, almost like perfectly timed. Yes, everyone started really running with it, and especially Kentucky media. They're like, this should this should never be. This should never be something that happens. It should be illegal. The NCAA should put a stop to this. We can't have this anymore. This is irate, outrageous. And I'm laughing because I'm like, yo, okay, well, you do realize. First off, I don't even know if it's true. And to be honest, I don't think it is. Just giving my thoughts and opinions on it. I If it ended up being true, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be upset. But... I just don't think that Jerry Jones is going out there with all of the things that he has already going on in the sphere of the Dallas Cowboys and all of that and going into a sport that he has not much to do with. He's more of a football guy. I know he just loves the Razorbacks, but he's a football guy. And he's just walking in there being like, oh, well, you know, Ah, you Kentucky players that are getting all this money. How about this? I'm Jerry Jones. Give me your contact. Let me slide into your DMs, even though I'm not on social media. What are you making, kid? Oh, you're making that? Oh, well, in that case, here you go. I am offering you double if that means that you will come to Arkansas. Like, do you really think that that's going on? I don't. I don't. It's a funny story to talk about. It's a funny thing to think about, but I don't believe it's true. I, I have always felt this way about particular individuals, but especially big money makers, billionaires, high end money makers. First off, they never have gotten to the point in their careers and where they are as business people by making dumb business decisions and spending money on dumb things. That's never happened, and it's never going to happen, and it never should happen. So that's the first thing. That's why I don't think Jerry Jones is doing it. Not to say it's a dumb investment, because this would be a great investment if you're a Razorback fan and if you're the players. It's like, that's what you want to believe. But on the other side of it, you're, you're sitting there being like, okay, but why, what would Jerry Jones get out of it? Because that's how business people work. They're like, okay, well, if you want me to invest in something, if you want me to pay for something, what do I get out of it? Do I get my money back? Do I get my money back with interest? Is my investment going towards something that can benefit me? And, and some sort of goods or service, like what is the benefit here? And if you're thinking about Jerry Jones and giving this inordinate amount of money, apparently, to Razorback, potential Razorback basketball players, what is Jerry Jones getting out of that? Sure, maybe there's just like a little underhand deal that he's got going on. Maybe uh, he gets some, actually, I don't know. The dude's a billionaire, but there's nothing that can be offered to him that he can't get on his own. It's like, oh, well, maybe they give him a, some rides on his pr private jet. You know, okay, he has one of those. Uh, maybe get some good seats. He's Jerry Jones. He could walk in and buy the stadium if he wanted to. So I, I just don't believe that it, he's just like, ah, I'll, I'll double it for basketball. Just any player out there that's interested in Kentucky, I'm doubling it. Like, who, like, think about it. Who's contacting these people on behalf of Jerry Jones? I like, think he's got one of his Cowboys execs being like, hey, find these kids that are committed to Kentucky or have decommitted from Kentucky. Find out how much they were making in NIL and then double it, no matter what. Like, is, Does he have a minion that's doing that? Does he have a secretary that's getting into contact with these kids? Does he get on the phone with them in that, in that southern Arkansas accent? Talking to these kids. Now here you got about $9 million total. What, what about 18? I'm willing to give you $18 million just, just to call the hogs. No, I, I don't believe that for a second. And again, I want to believe it. I want to believe it's true. I want to believe it's, it's a thing that we could actually discuss and actually be serious about. But I'm sorry, I can't. It's my mic. I'm fixing it in the middle of this. But still, it's just it's one of those too good to be true things. I like the, I like the idea of it, but I think it's too good to be true. Now, that being said, I do believe there can be some benefits to just it being out there, being in the story, being the report of it all. I do believe there can be some positives from that. And what I mean by that is it goes to the same thing that you got from John Tyson, that you got from anybody where it's out there and being reported. 
that Arkansas has this amount, an inordinate amount of money for NIL that they have pledged for student athletes in the basketball program. Like, even if that wasn't true, say if it was 100% false, that still gets people's attention. That gets players' attention. Players that may not have been interested before, may have not cared before, may not even care about John Calipari, may not care about Arkansas, it doesn't matter. They see that seven-figure number getting thrown out, and suddenly they're a lot more interested in Arkansas. They're like, oh, you know, I've, always, I've, I've never been to Fayetteville. I don't even know where Arkansas is at on a map, but if they're willing to pay me big money, I'll go there. And it's the same thing with the Jerry Jones angle. Everyone knows who Jerry Jones is. He's one of the astute and one of the greatest alums that have ever come through the University of Arkansas, but specifically the athletic department. He's done a lot of things for his Dallas Cowboys, and you Cowboys fans out there, you can say whatever it is you want to say about him being as a GM or what he has done for the Cowboys or not done for the Cowboys. He did bring two Super Bowl, three Super Bowls, that is, to the Dallas Cowboys organization, so just keep that in mind. But he's a name that everyone knows. I, I wonder if you gave a test to the average fan out there and ask him to name all 32 owners of the NFL teams and franchises, how many of them can name all of them? Probably next to none. And probably most of them could only name between five and 10. But I guarantee you that if anyone named any of them, they're going to name Jerry Jones because he's that popular. He's kind of like a Calipari a little bit. Larger than life, big celebrity that everyone knows his name. And anytime he does something, it's a huge story. Like it's that big of a deal. So you got the name Jerry Jones out there being connected to double. Like it's not an exact number. It's not like, oh, $5 million, $6 million, whatever. It's not an exact number. All we know is it's double. And I'm sorry, folks, you double anything when it comes to finances, it's always good. It doesn't matter what the amount is. Think about your salary right now. Double it. Would that be nice? Is that a lot of money? I bet you it is. So that's the perfect situation for Arkansas and for the perception that they're getting. It's about the publicity. It's about the press. I don't know if it's true. Arkansas hasn't said anything about it. But donors haven't said anything. Calipari has. Nobody of note or nobody who can have it involvement in the, in, in the institution of the University of Arkansas, the athletic department, has said anything about this. So there's no responsibility or accountability that falls onto the University of Arkansas. All it is is just a guy named Truly Donovan putting it out there and can people running with it. Kentucky fans running with it. Kentucky media running with it. They're like, this is outrageous. Okay, that's fine. You can say that. You can say it's true or not, but maybe step up your game a little bit. Maybe you should step up your game. Maybe you should do a little bit better. Maybe you should try a little bit harder if that's what you're doing. Again, I really, I really, really hope that it is true. I do. Because uh, I think it'd just be an awesome story and just another reason to love Jerry Jones. I'm not a Cowboy fan, uh, but I love me some Jerry Jones. Uh, I think that what he's done for the U of A is unheralded. He still loves his hogs. That's why Arkansas, because, you know, we talk about the Arlington game against Texas A&M, and it hasn't gone Arkansas's way. We know that. It's been frustrating. We know that. Like, we know all of that. But to play a game in that stadium every year is something that most, the vast majority of college football players would love to do, and they don't. Because if you're not, if, unless, you, unless you play in the Cotton Bowl or in the Big 12 title game or I think there's another random bowl game that's there or a national championship that's held there, as a college athlete, you're not going to play a game in Jerry World. So say what you want about the game against AM. I agree. It needs to stop against AM, but I still want to play in Jerry World because that is a big deal. And that shows you just how much, how much he loves Arkansas. He wants his Razorbacks in his palace. So if we found out that it was 100% true, that it was him going out and offering double the NIL that Kentucky was offering to their players, some people may frown upon that. Some people may say that's a bad thing. Some people may say that's a... That's a, that's a negative, and it's a bad look for college athletics or whatever. You know what I say? I say, bravo. I say, it sucks not to be us. I say, I don't hate us because you ain't us. Like, that, to me, is the greatest flex of all time. Oh, that sucks. Not only did we steal your coach, we're stealing your players, and we got one of the most powerful and most well-known sports figures in all of professional sports who happens to be an alum who is going out and 
throwing his balls on the desk and saying like, oh yeah, you want you want a pair of balls? Here's two pairs of balls. Come over here and play. If it is true. I have my doubts. There's a lot of stuff that gets thrown around all the time. But I love it for the sake of conversation. I love it for the sake of of intrigue and interest and all of that. I love it. And I think that it's it's something where you, as a Razorback fan, have always wondered if they're ever going to go all in. If you're ever, you always think about, ah, just write a check. Well, where's the Waltons at? Where's the Tysons at? Where's, where's Jerry Jones at? He needs to be writing these checks. I don't know all what Jerry Jones or the Jones family has provided financially for Arkansas over the past 30 years. I mean, there's some things we can point to, like the something we talked with Coach Z about, the Jones Center, uh, the, the academic center that was built for Arkansas and is a great spot. Like, yeah, we can point to that. We can point to the, I think it's the Razorback statue of all the hogs outside of Razorback Stadium that was donated or paid for, however you want to put it, by Jerry Jones. There are a few things that we can look at, but I don't care how like what the number is that he's giving. I know that he's taking care of Arkansas. I think every time they play in Arlington, they get five million dollars. I think both teams, Arkansas and AM, get five million dollars. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So for those of you who are as a Razorback fan, if you have a problem with what if this is true, again, if this is true, but if you have a problem with it, screw it. Move on. Who cares? It's fine. Move on. It doesn't matter. It's all good. If you're a Kentucky fan, Whoops. Sorry. Maybe uh, tighten up your game a little bit. Or if you're somebody that's just in the NCAA it feels like, this is wrong. Is it? Do you not think that this stuff has been going on forever? Do you not think that this has always been a problem? It has been. And it will be. It continues to be. So my whole thing is just Stop. Stop, stop freaking out. Stop thinking the worst. Stop thinking that it's always just clutching of your pearls. Stop. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Relax. But, man, it is so funny. Uh, let's see. I saw some uh, tweets coming in and some messages coming in, too. Uh, I wanted to uh, laugh about and have some fun with. See, if there's some about, I know some of y'all were mentioning it, and uh, I'm on Twitter right now, about the BYU player going to Louisville who's in the transfer portal instead of committing to Kentucky and going to Kentucky, the big man got to look up his name. I have to find it. So maybe one of y'all can help me with it. But uh, I saw that and I kept wondering, yeah, Ali, uh, Ali Khalifa, I think is how you say his name from BYU. That's weird. Now why? See, here's the thing. I was told that, Mark Pope is a better coach than John Calipari. I was told that. So why would a guy like Khalifa, who played for Mark Pope at BYU, why, oh, why would he not want to play for a great coach, the better coach, and instead go to Louisville, the rival? Man, where'd you park your squad car, Dick Tracy? You might want to figure that one out. Maybe that's just something that uh, is false. Maybe he's not a better coach. Mark Pope seems like a nice guy, a decent guy. And I'm going to put out an article. That's right, I wrote something. It's probably horribly misspelled and hopefully uh, uh, gets pointed out to you a little bit. But that's the thing where I, I, can't, I can't love that enough. Like when everyone's getting excited about Jackson Robinson, no offense to the kid, but like when they're saying, oh, yeah, he's going to bring him from BYU. Okay. That's who you're counting on? That's who you're counting on? I wouldn't say. I, I, I just don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the way you want to go. But, man, y'all Kentucky fans need to get over this. I'm telling you right now. Y'all Kentucky fans need to get over Cal leaving. And I love my buddy Bobby Regan. He was on the show earlier this week, and I know a lot of you saw his uh, tweet or his post on Barstool Sports, and it got you all rived up. He is so salty. He is so mad, and I love it. Just know that you, he's putting stuff like out there about Cal and how terrible he is and lame he is is because Razorback fans are going to click on it. So just remember that. 
but I have, I have loved it. And I love the fact that we still have people watching here on my show from Kentucky. That's also been great. Uh, cause I, I saw this from a uh, wildcat Piper. He says, beautiful. You got to bribe your players to play for you. And he has a lot of laughing, crying emo emojis. So, so you think that all those Kentucky players that you here, here's what it is. Those can Cal Perry was not made by Kentucky. Cal Perry made Kentucky. Okay. I'm not talking about historically. I'm talking about the run that those years that Cal Perry was at Kentucky. That was not Kentucky. Cal Perry was having success at Memphis, high level success at Memphis. That's what we talked about with Coach Z. Yeah, at UMass. Cal made Kentucky. Kentucky did not make Cal. So for you to think, and any Kentucky fan to think that players were just coming to Kentucky under Cal Perry because of the, the mecca of college basketball and the aura of Kentucky, and you weren't paying them at all. You weren't, they were like, oh, you know, I'm getting offered this big-time money under the table illegally from these other schools, but I'm going to Kentucky for free. No. And even if they did, it had nothing to do with Kentucky. It had to do with Cal Perry. That's why all those players that were committed to Kentucky, those five-star players, they decommitted. That's why Big Z's coming to Arkansas, and that's why he's not the only Kentucky player that's going to be coming to Arkansas. Has nothing to do with Kentucky. It's Calipari. And so, yeah, got your players to bri bribe to play for you. And? And? Okay. Have at it. We'll see who's, uh, you see who's the last person standing. You guys just had a player that 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 was under your current coach at his previous spot who entered in the portal and he chose to go to your rival. <laughs> Do you not see how pathetic that is? Do you not see how alarming that should be to you? A player that was that played for your current coach at his previous stop could play anywhere in the country. Got offers, got talked to everything. He chose your rival. He chose the play the, the 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 big school in the same state instead of you. That should be very telling. That should be very telling. But what hey, whatever makes helps you sleep at night, folks. Whatever makes you feel better. Because I've I still think that there's a lot more coming for Arkansas, a lot more positivity coming for Arkansas than there is Kentucky. Just being honest. Uh, we will continue to discuss some of your chats and some of your things, too. Uh, again, the phone line's uh, a little bit weird. Again, we've been having some phone line issues. I don't know why, but we'll get those fixed up and squared away here after a while. But, folks, I, of course, have to tell you about our friends over at Alumni Hall because Alumni Hall is the one-stop shop for all Razorback fans. No matter the apparel, if it's for the men, it's for the women, it's for the kids, for the dogs, cats, everything. It all happens at Alumni Hall. Every time I go in there, into the store in Fayetteville, they have things where I just have to have because it's new, because it's nice, because it's perfect for what I'm looking forward to, not only the upcoming season or in the current season of whatever sport, but also for the summertime, maybe for the wintertime. Every time I go in there, there's something new. And it's not just one item. It's a bunch of items. They're always up to date on everything. Their store is humongous. And they have everything you could possibly imagine. They got the high-end quality clothing, the Johnny O, the Peter Millar, Southern Tide, Columbia. They got it. And the best thing about it is because of their location in Fayetteville, some of you may not be able to get to it. Well, just go to nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. It's nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. You can check out their entire inventory there and have it shipped directly to your door. Simple, right? It is. So instead of having to worry about battling traffic, traveling a long ways, if you're not in the Northwest Arkansas area, just get all of your Razorback apparel for Alumni Hall by going to nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall, and you won't be disappointed because Alumni Hall is the ultimate Razorback shopping destination. All right, we will take a break. When we come back, we'll get to your Arkansas update and more of your chats, too. So stay with us here on the John Neighbors Show live from Natty State Sports Studios. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. Hey, hey, John, uh, Bob Polk, Arkansas Democrat. Is that I added two part if that's okay. You mentioned Arkansas. Eric. Um, why do you always talk about Arkansas? But go ahead. Well, why do you always talk about Kentucky? <laughs> 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 
missed it. Okay, you missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go through it today. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but... You got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile! Okay? Dang, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking! I'm so excited! Big Red! Oh! Oh! Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys. Welcome to the SEC. Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbor Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. <laughs> Welcome back into the John Neighbors Show here live from United States Sports Studios as we're continuing on with all the discussions that are going on in Razorback land. Some of them are pretty funny. This Jerry Jones stuff cracked me up, man. It's like you can't handle it. People can't handle it. And I, I'm loving the Kentucky tears that are coming from it. It's pathetic, really. It's pathetic. I feel like a program that has as many national championships and as many wins as they do they should definitely, definitely not be acting the way that they do and so butthurt about Cal leaving. Still, to this day, it's so weird to me. Like, get over it. Move on. Move on. Arkansas fans have. You don't see them hate tweeting Muss. Why? They've upgraded. You usually don't hate tweet or hate text anybody that feels like you had an upgrade from. That never happens. I mean, have you ever had an ex that broke up with you? And then, or actually, no, it'd be more like you had an ex that you broke up with and you went to a better human being overall, more attractive, more everything. Are you still hate texting that ex? No. You're, you're fine. You're like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So it's only the ones that hate text the other side of things are the ones that are not in a good way. They're the ones that are embarrassed. They're the ones that are ashamed. They're the ones that are like, hey, I don't know what to do here. I'm nervous. I'm scared of what's going to happen. Stop. If you're as confident as you are in Mark Pope, if you're as confident as you are in the Kentucky program, you should not give two rips about Arkansas. But appreciate you guys watching in and listening in anyways. You make it fun, especially in the chat too. But we'll get to part of that, too, here in a second. But it gets time for your Arkansas update brought to you by Davis & Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owner's insurance agency securing what matters the most. And uh, there are some things like yesterday, Razorback Baseball taking care of business and sweeping the Texas Tech Red Raiders in their midweek series, which you know, I don't care who you are, where you are, what you're doing. I don't care how it's done. If you win, a win is a win is a win. And a se midweek series against a really tough Texas Tech team, you're always going to take that. Well, one run wins each time, but last night was a 5-4 to four final score as uh, Arkansas now gets ready to go on the road to take on South Carolina, happening this weekend. But uh, shout-out to Arkansas with Peyton Stovall, had a much better game this time around, hit a home run uh, to lead things off. And 
Uh, Arkansas only got four hits in this game, but that's really all that they needed as uh, Colin Fisher was in there. Uh, did an okay job there in four innings, but how about the bullpen? Cody Frank, Cooper Dossett, Jake Faraday didn't allow – none of those guys allowed a single hit, and Stone Hewlett came in, did allow a hit in just nine pitches, but got the job done. So Arkansas sweeps Texas Tech. On the football side of things, uh, weird stuff. I don't care what anybody says. Weird stuff. Max Fletcher, the punter for Arkansas, and a guy who's been on the team a couple seasons now, officially entered into the transfer portal. He had 97 attempts the past two seasons, and he averaged 43.2 yards a punt with a long of 71 and 33 punts inside the 20-yard line. Now, when I saw this, I was like, geez, that's wild. And the amount of you that came after me and was like, good written, that guy sucked. He's a shankopotamus every single time. Uh, the The other guys beat him out in the spring. Okay, I was like, all right, hold on, hold on. One. Don't ever just look at the spring game and because one punter had a better outing in a practice than the other punter, does that mean like, oh, that guy sucks? It's one practice. So don't use that as your crutch. And the second thing is, Max Fletcher was one of the better punters in the country last season. I think it was number seven is where he finished up, like a top 10 punter. Now, people always remember the bad punts, which he did have some bad punts. He had some shanks. It was not to say he didn't. But to act like he was trash is dumb. That's a dumb thing to think, and that's a dumb thing to say. And I'm not some sort of, like, Max Fletcher apologist, but I'm also trying to live in a reality of thinking, hey, maybe he wasn't as bad as what a lot of you tried to make him out to be. So... He's in the transfer portal, though. He's moving on. And he'll have a lot of suitors, I am sure. But at the same time, I don't know how many teams are looking for a punter right now. Maybe. I don't know. I wish him nothing but the best of luck. I was really un- uh, sad, which, by the way, Boss Hogs podcast came out today with Josh Braun, Addison Nichols, Patrick Kudis, and Taylor Green. Definitely go listen to it. It's good stuff. Really good stuff from them. Uh, but also... Max Fletcher and Cam Little were scheduled to come on the Boss Hawks podcast with Josh Braun, but due to timing and structure and all that, they could never make it work out. So that is a disappointment. I really wanted to hear from Max Fletcher, and he was a really nice guy and a a really cool dude. So I really wish him nothing but the best. But, yeah, check out the Boss Hawks podcast. I mean, all of our podcasts are incredible. Bombastic podcast is awesome. Uh, Of course, Curtis and Scotty killing it with the pod at the Palace, keeping you up to date on all things basketball because that's what people really care about right now. Um, but yeah, check out all of our great podcasts and uh, on our podcast network here with Natty State. And that is your Arkansas update brought to you by Davis and Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owners insurance agency securing what matters the most. All right, we'll try to get to some of your chats, folks, because uh, man, some of you are fired up about this NIL thing, about Jerry Jones and uh, what's been going on. A lot of you Kentucky fans, which are weird. Uh, again, again, keep keep bleeping that chicken, as they say. Uh, <laughs> just, like Sam Bell's like, hey, I heard J.B. Hunt was giving free semi, semis to signees, and I hope those semis you're referring to are trucks. I really do. So, yeah, that's kind of how people are looking at every big donor that you can have. Help out in some capacity. Help out in some capacity. Let's see. This one comes from Robert. He says, when do you think Arkansas will get the next recruit in basketball? You know, I get asked this every day, and I would say, first off, it doesn't matter, timing of it, they'll have a team, but I would still be really shocked. I would say this, I'll be super shocked if Arkansas gets to Saturday night and they don't have any more players committed, other than Big Z, and that can include high school players, that can include transfers, whatever, but I would be plum pixelated if they did not have players in already committed by Saturday night. So that could be, it could happen tonight. It could happen in two seconds. Nope, hadn't popped yet. But when it does, we're going to be on top of it here at United States Sports. I know the Pot at the Palace guys are going to be going live whenever it happens. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do that for you. But yeah, Young Sea Lion says drop a Discord link. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, um, we're in the process of having a Natty State Sports Discord. 
We'll keep you updated on it. We haven't done it yet, but be on the lookout. So those of you who use Discord, we're going to be looking into that and getting that going. Uh, Count says, going to be crazy when Bloomberg starts offering kids $20 million in I to play for John Hopkins football. See, again, it has to be going to an investment. This is why I'm, I just don't believe that every billionaire or millionaire wants to just donate to an NIL program. Like it's, is, was it Tim Cook from Apple? Uh, and he might be, but I'm like, is he donating a ton of money to NIL at Auburn? If he is, that's great, but like, it's not a negative. You guys got to stop with this negative stuff of like, oh, they're, they're putting in money there, and uh, you know, that's too much money. Shut up. You're just jealous because your, your school doesn't have it. That's what it is. Like, I, I just I laugh how everyone is just like, Texas A&M has so much money they, they've given to the NIL. You see me crying about it? You see anybody crying about it? You shouldn't be. Just try to beat them in other ways. Quit your whining and try to find other ways to win. Scott says, funny, if Jerry Jones were giving that money to Kentucky, the Kentucky fans would be super excited about it and gloating. Of course, of course. That's the whole point. has nothing to do with about Jerry Jones giving money to his school. It has to be about Jerry Jones giving money to Arkansas basketball as they hired Kentucky's head coach. That's what it's about. Because I guarantee you, Kentucky fans, if they heard that Kansas was, if Jerry Jones was giving the money to Kansas or giving the money to Duke, they they wouldn't care. But they care now. They care now. Uh, let's see. <laughs> like this from Kali Hog. Can we stop talking about how much money we have and start spending it? Uh, I think that that's going to, I think that's happening. It's contract negotiations, right? I mean, NIL, there's, there, you got to have contracts with it. Whenever we have student athletes here at, the, at Natty State Sports, we got to put together contracts. Got to make sure everyone's taking care of them. Contracts take a little bit. 80s Rogers says, Why is Kentucky so confident with Pope? Because he has zero wins in the NCAA tournament. That was my whole point to Bobby Regan. And he's still, again, I love Bobby. I know what he's doing, but there's still no answer to that. They're like, Well, Cal hadn't won anything. Well, Cal's won one. He's won one. And fun fact, since like eight off or up, Mark Pope is the first coach Kentucky's ever hired that did not have a previous NCAA tournament win. Not one. In fact, I think he's the first coach that's not had at least a Sweet 16 appearance. I think Billy Clyde Gillespie is the only one that they hired that didn't that did not have a Final Four appearance because Patino did. Pretty sure Tubby Smith did. I think I'm pretty sure Tubby Smith did. Let's go back and see. But the point is, is that this is the most inexperienced coach that Kentucky has ever hired in their history. Oh, but he was on that 96 team. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. How about that? That must be great. Um, Let's see. There's another comment. I need to start highlighting these. I, I got to remember to do that. Bot Magnet says, was Jerry on the national championship football team? He was indeed. Him and Jimmy Johnson. Frank Burles is coach. Barry Switzer was a... I think he was a player. I think he was a GA or whatever they called it. Assistant coaches. Ken Atfield was on that team. A lot of great coaches were on that team. Kimberly says, if you're a young basketball player whose whole life revolves around basketball, Jerry who? Okay. But again, there's people that transcend. You could say that same thing about football. Well, if you're a football, he's only been a football player forever. Who's John Calipari? There's some people that transcend the sport. Jerry Jones 100% transcends football. Just like John Calipari, 100% transcends basketball. Coach K transcends basketball. Some coaches are just like that. And Calipari's like that. Jerry Jones is like that. I still don't understand why people are mad. That's what I laugh about. People are just mad. And some of these responses, I can't even get that. Counts asked about uh, Reed Shepard entered the draft. Yes, he did. He did officially enter his name into the draft. <laughs> that's one of this way where he says BBNs and shambles. That's all I guess. Again, it's, I like to hate on him a little bit. I like to make fun of him right now because it's fun because they are in shambles. But they don't have to be, and they shouldn't be. I don't know why that they are. Like, why do you care? If you really don't care about Cal Perry, 
then you wouldn't, and, and you're really all in on Mark Pope, then you shouldn't even be giving your thoughts and, and jumping into a live stream of Natty State Sports, although we appreciate it. Shouldn't even happen. So, let's see. I also believe Brandon Garrison, who is a big man, he was a transfer from Oklahoma State, <laughs> goes from Joe Tipton earlier today. Who if Joe Tipton's on top of it when it comes to portal stuff. But he's, he said Kentucky's Mark Pope and Arkansas's John Calipari are looking to land a visit from him. Uh, he's a transfer forward, and he's a former McDonald's All-American. It almost gives the vibe that anybody that Calipari's going after, Mark Pope's like, oh, I want him too. I want him, I want him to visit. Come here. We'll, we'll, we'll have fun. We'll be together. It'll be great. It's like, hey, go, go, go find your own players. I just, this is so, so ridiculous. I see Matt Jones's tweet. Kentucky Sports Radio, Matt Jones. He says about uh, Ali Khalifa, who, again, it's the BYU transfer who went to Louisville instead of Kentucky. Matt Jones says in his tweet, I would have been cool with getting a Ali Khalifa. I think he could be a solid contributor to Louisville, but he is must, much less valuable to Kentucky if he is redshirting. They need players for this year, and that scenario, not getting him is okay. All right. Sure. Whatever you got to say. Eh, we didn't want him anyways. So funny. All right. Anybody else getting in on this? No. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for basketball. I really am. And I think Razorback fans have every right to be. And it's okay to talk your talk right now, Razorback fans. You're the ones getting all the positive attention you're the one that's getting mentioned all the time you're the one that has a hall of fame coach you're the one that's got the recruits about to come in like in droves the arkansas kentucky basketball game may be the most anticipated arkansas kentucky basketball game next year of all time of all time not even just the one in rup but this has reignited a rivalry to no end and i'm going to be honest i know bobby regan said it yesterday just to say it or was it two days ago? Two days ago. But I'm going to be honest. Any Kentucky fan that says they hate Louisville right now more than Arkansas is lying to you. If they, if you put on the schedule in front, or put the schedule in front of Kentucky fans and said, "All right, what's the game you want to win the most this year?" None of them are going to say Louisville over Arkansas. Not one. So by reigniting the rivalry, it really brings in a whole new element to SEC basketball and to college basketball in general. Regular season college basketball isn't always going to be the most watched thing, most paid attention to thing. But when you have something like this going on, suddenly it becomes a little bit more intriguing, more interesting. But I know that Ole Miss is going to be a good team. Like Chris Beard's good coach. He's gotten some good players. He's going to be good. Rick Barnes always going to be solid. Now, we'll see if Alabama gets lucky again in the NCAA tournament. Um, Auburn's going to be solid. And I want to I know about, like, South Carolina. Like, can they make it two years in a row that they get it going? I don't know. Chris Jans. I think, they, I think Chris Jans at Mississippi State is always going to be a 8-9 seed NCAA tournament team, maybe a 10. Like, they'll always be in the tournament, or at least on the bubble, but they're never going to be higher than that. And that's okay. Getting into the tournament is important. So they'll always be a decent team to deal with. Georgia with Mike White. Eh, Golden. Eh. Texas and Oklahoma should be fascinating. Oklahoma's not... I, I don't see them much of a threat. Texas is good, but not great. Solid, but not elite. So, I mean, next year you're talking about it's going to be between Arkansas... Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee. And again, I'm not sold on Kentucky just yet. I'm not going to give them the benefit yet. They got to show me something before I start thinking that they're going to compete for anything on a high level. I, I just, until I see something. Yeah. Clint, I like this uh, question coming in from uh, Clint. Uh, here where he says at United States Sports, is it a bad look for Kentucky if BYU upgraded their head coaching position? Uh, yeah, because I was told that Mark Pope's a great coach, X's and O's coach. 
Like it, it just reminds me so much of what I felt because of what I was told and what I believed, as well as many Razorback fans, about Chad Morris. I'm not saying Mark Pope is the same as Chad Morris, but I am saying that they have the similarities. We're like, oh, X's and O's. You know, really uh, the type of coach that you need. He, he's really good at breaking down this and, and doing these things. Okay. But he hasn't proven it at a high level yet, has he? No, but once he gets here, man, it's going to be happening. Oh, okay. Good luck. We'll see. But, okay, I love this comment, too. This is a great one from uh, Stephen and Louisa. It says, I guess if Arkansas wins a national championship, Kentucky fans start saying be only because of the money. Fine. Fine. Great. Like, why, why would you? Who cares? If you win a national championship, I do not give a rip how much money was paid. What, who the coach was, who the players were, what they're at. I, I don't care. Do not care. Like, UConn's won it back-to-back years. Dominating. Dominating teams. Why would I give a rip how much those guys made in NIL? They won. This adage, and like, there's some fans about this in other sports too, but the adage is just cracking me up of, oh, well, you know, we're, we're just about money. Yeah, we we went it the right way. Well, you didn't win it, so maybe you should start. Bring it on. Say it's about the money. Sorry that we're smarter than you and have a lot more money than you. Apologies. Scott says, I'm having mental turmoil. I'm a Kentucky fan who can't stand our fans right now, and now I'm on the edge of the seat waiting for the recruits to Arkansas. For Arkansas, UK fans saying, go Hogs, LOL. Okay, Scott, I don't know if you're trolling or not, but if you're not, Kudos to you, because that's a, that's a, that's a big man to, to admit that. Yeah, I don't know if you're trolling or not, but you should be, you can, I don't know. Am I rooting for Muss at USC? No. But am I hoping that they fail in epic proportions? No. So I, I just, again, Kentucky has never had coaches leave them. But they did now. And you saw who they ended up with. That's another thing, too. Kentucky ended up on, what, their fourth, fifth option? Because, you know, Cal Perry, we were told in that press conference with him and Juracek, Juracek made it very clear. He was, there was only one person I offered this job to, and that was Cal Perry. I'm like, okay, whatever. But even so, what if, if Cal Perry was your third choice, I'd say that's a pretty good one. But we know for a fact Kentucky was talking about getting Nate Oates in the beginning, but he says, like, nah, I ain't leaving. They throw in Scott Drew. They went after Scott Drew. He said, nope, I'm good, thank you. And then <laughs> they went after Dan Hurley, which was a dumb decision. I don't even know how serious they even were about it. It shouldn't have been because he wasn't leaving. And they go after Billy Donovan. <sighs> and they settled for Mark Pope. Let no one tell you otherwise. They settled for Mark Pope. Because in T- Kentucky, that's all they got is, ba- is basketball. They got to be good at basketball. Because without basketball, they have no other sports that they can spike the ball on. They are a basketball school. But yeah, I don't see that being the case. All right. We just got a few minutes here before we are going to wrap up here on today's show. Appreciate everybody watching in. And uh, I, w- I want to revisit the John, uh, John, the Jerry Jones. So many J names around uh, here nowadays with uh, all the greatness that's bringing in for Arkansas. Uh, but before we do, though, folks, I got to tell you about the Autograph app. The Autograph app is a phenomenal app that you need to download if you haven't downloaded it yet. Use promo code Natty in ATTY because what it is is that it is content that you're already going to be consuming, like our content here at Natty State Sports. If you go to that app, you can see the written articles. You can listen to our podcast. You can check out all the things that they have to offer and be able to get rewarded for it because they have this system in place to where if you download the app, you use that promo code Natty in A-T-T-Y and you consume this media, you'll be able to unlock really great rewards. We're talking about great prices on baseball tickets like for Arkansas and Florida. That is an incredible, an incredible thing that you could be able to go to those games for a low, low price. Ticket packages. 
that are going to be available. So check out the Autograph app today. If you want to go to that game, you want to see a lot more about it, check it out. Download it today in the App Store. Use promo code Natty, in A-T-T-Y. That's promo code Natty, and I promise you won't be disappointed. You can even use that little QR code. I know you all have to use it. And if you don't know how to use the QR code, folks, get on your iPhone right now and get your camera, aim it at the screen. Or I should say, like, aim it at the screen here. And then highlight it, and then it'll open it up, and it'll download it for you. So it's really easy to do. It's really easy to do. So uh, let's see. You want to talk, see some other chats, too, before we close up shop here. Yeah, some Tommy's like, Muss, who is that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jonathan says, spoiler alert, no such thing as true blue blood anymore. Kids follow money. Now NIL's changed the game. Jonathan, I actually really agree with you on that. I really agree with you on that. I think blue bloods to an extent exist and they still will be there because of those programs having high end NIL. Like I still think Duke has high NIL. I think Carolina and Kansas, I know for a fact, has high NIL. So a lot of it goes hand in hand. But as far as you just being a blue blood, like you can't be a blue blood anymore and have average NIL and expect to be, be stay a blue blood. Like you just can't do that. It's not the way it is. It's not the way it is. Todd says that the recruits that Cal got to at Kentucky intended to stick with him when they have been signed by now acquaintances at Louisville right now. And Boogie said he was back to square one. I don't know, Todd. Maybe. Maybe not. But that's why we have to wait and see what all happens and see how it plays out. It could be something that they're just weighing all their options. I still think, to be honest, Quaintance ends up at Arkansas. But I know Louisville also has a lot of NIL, too. That's what makes it competitive. Places they're not really uh, considering is Kentucky, though. I can tell you that. Okay, he's uh, so good. Scott, you're not trolling. I was a big Patino fan rooted for the 96 UK team, but a UK fans. 20 years in our fan base is a bunch of whiners left Cal and following him to Arkansas. Thank you, Scott. You're a good Kentucky fan. Because that's the thing is I'm not saying you have to root for Cal Perry. I'm just saying if you're a fan of Kentucky and you are loving your hire and loving your program and the direction it's going, you don't have to bring up Arkansas. You shouldn't have to. You should feel good about it. I do want to re readdress the Jerry Jones thing that we – actually, I wanted to lead off the show today with it, but – Coach Matt Zimmerman, Coach Z, love Z. Uh, he came in a little bit early, so it's fine. We got it done. But I want to readdress that. Jerry Jones is such a brilliant sports mind, business mind, everything. And he's done a lot of great things for Arkansas. But it also makes me wonder if, if this is true, which I still don't think it is, but if it's true that he's doubling this NIL money and stuff, now the pressure gets put on for football side of things, too. Basketball can go a long way, but football is the moneymaker. So if this is true, is he going to be doing the same thing for football? How much money are they investing in a football? Is it something as direct as that? Like, I have so many questions about it. So many questions about it. But I still don't believe it's true. And nothing against Trilly Donovan. <laughs> still love that Twitter name. Nothing against Trilly Donovan, but I need to see more. I need to wait on more. I need to get a more of a vibe, if that's true or not. But again, hope it is. I, I like having money. I like having more money, more NIL money than anybody's. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, Jonathan says, Roach, we need this dude. Yeah, Jeremy Roach would be a huge get, huge get. Transferred from Duke, interested in Arkansas. If they got him, that would be massive. Uh, an elite level guard, one of the best players in the portal right now. He'd come in right now and start right now. Uh, Colton's asked, is there any truth to the Joe Johnson rumors? I talked a little bit about this yesterday, and I, I don't mind talking about it again today. I don't know of that. Uh, I have not heard anything on that. I think that you could see it from both sides. Could this be Joe Johnson's side of things, trying to get something about it? And get a get a job with Kentucky or with Arkansas now that Cal left Kentucky, I could see that. I could see Cal also bringing in Joe Johnson. I wouldn't be against it at all. Cal has free reign and the benefit of the doubt with me. I, I don't whatever he wants to do, coaches he wants to bring in, coaches he doesn't want to bring in, all of that. He 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 has free reign. Do whatever you want. But he brings in Joe Johnson. I'm pumped. How would you not be pumped? And how, how could you not be excited about having? an NBA all-star Hall of Fame basketball player on staff who is from Arkansas 
and is back. Like, I, I don't, I don't know how you can't be pumped by that. So, if it's true, great. If Joe Johnson's on staff, great. I have not heard anything on that. And I also want to caution everybody about this too. The Cal Perry hire showed exactly how hush hush everything was until one little leak, leak got out. And I bet you, because of that fact, Cal Perry is being over the top crazy silent and secretive and trying to keep everything in perspective right now. He ain't taking any chances. So, yeah, just wait. It could be something where one day they just have an announcement the entire staff and the entire roster. Like That'd be really funny. I don't think that'll happen, but it would be really funny. But again, if they hire Joe Johnson, uh, I'd be all for it. What does the bench look like right now? Well, it looks like a bench because there's no players on it. Nobody at all. Blaine says, uh, what's your over-under for win totals next year for the basketball Hogs? Dude, I don't even know. I mean, I know they're going to win more than 20. I mean, they don't have a roster yet. I know they're going to win more than 20. But I got to see what the full roster looks like before I can really be specific about that. Jonathan says, I have to know what was up with the pic you posted of the waitress. Ah, Okay, so I'll admit this, and I haven't, we haven't officially announced it on social media just yet. <laughs> but I'm, I was going to, I can talk about it now, and then we'll have an official announcement on that. And I, I will apologize. I know that people are really psyched up, and anything that I say or Curtis says or Scotty says on social media, I think it's like Razorback basketball related. I apologize about that. But essentially, what that is it has nothing to do with Razorback basketball. I'm going to be honest. And I, again, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have done it. I didn't think about it that way. But it has nothing to do with that. This has to do with the fact that here at Natty State Sports, we are partnering with Tin Roof in downtown Fayetteville on Dixon Street. Uh, we have put together a long-term great partnership with them to where I'm going to be having this show, the John Neighbors Show, broadcasted live from Tin Roof on Thursdays pretty much every week. We'll give you more details on it. That's the generic part of it. We're still hashing out a lot of the details. But we are officially going all in with Tin Roof. I love live music. I love Tin Roof on Dixon Street. It's a cool spot. Uh, I know that uh, they have food, they have beverages, they have everything. But I wanted to uh, kind of tease that before I put out the full graphic official announcement. So either way, uh, we're doing that. And Stay tuned for details, but that's the logo, the, the waitress that you're referring to on my social media. That's the logo uh, that I was using was the Tin Roof logo. So just wanted to clarify, but thank you for asking. Thank you for asking about that. Clint says, neighbors bring you and the boys to Texarkana. Oh, boy. I've been, I used to date a girl who was from Texarkana. I wasn't a fan of Texarkana. Nothing against uh, this fine city, but... I think it's the X angle that adds a little bit to it. But, hey, if, if anybody wants to, you know, have us do a live show down there, hit me up. Any business wants us to do a live show down there, we will gladly accept. Just hit me up on social media. And we'll make it happen. Tiffany says, last night Battle mentioned Boogie. Do you think that they're coming together? New Jersey boys, right? Yeah, I mean, Battle has such cryptic tweets. I don't know. I mean, that'd be great. I'd be excited. But I think the connection for New Jersey is interesting. But. I don't know. Cryptic tweets are the worst. Well, when student athletes do them, when I do them, they're okay. But when student athletes do it, then it's a problem. So, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I think, I think it's just funny how people react differently to those particular things and student athletes and all that. So, uh, also a reminder to folks, since we're talking about live shows next week, remember, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to be live doing this show live in the central Arkansas area. And we're so pumped for it. We're going to have on Monday live from the Rock and Roll Sushi in Conway starting at 4 o'clock. So if you're in the central Arkansas area, come on out and see us at 4 o'clock. We'll be there from 4 o'clock till we're done and we'll eat dinner there and come hang out. So we're going to have that set up there at Rock and Roll Sushi on Monday. Tuesday, before the Razorback baseball game at Dickie Stevens Ballpark, we are going to be at Twin Peaks. So they're in Little Rock. So come check us out and we'll hang out there. And then right before the game, come get you a little pregame action going on down there in Twin Peaks and Little Rock. And uh, it's going to be a great time. Great food, great atmosphere. Was it uh, Eats, Drinks, and Scenic Views? They got plenty of those down there. So we'll do that Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, 
we're going to be at Town Pump in Little Rock, one of my favorite places when I was living in Little Rock. It's a dive bar, and they have Wing Wednesday there on Wednesdays. So we're we're ex- I'm excited about that personally because I've always they have a little cool stage, but we're going to be there Wednesday night from four till we're done, and it's going to be so cool. So we're going to Tour Day Central Arkansas. We're going to be hanging out down there and uh, having some fun there too. So come on out again. Rock and Roll Sushi in Conway on Monday. Twin Peaks in Little Rock on Tuesday. Town Pump in Little Rock on Wednesday. And also, we're coming back next week. And on Friday, the day of the Florida series, we're going to be live from Hydrate NWA on Dixon Street. Good friend of mine, Jackson Lowry. You probably remember him. Former Razorback pitcher. He is the owner now of that. And we're going to do a live show from there, getting our uh, IVs, which is going to be awesome to talk about. And have it done there and a lot of former Razorback baseball players are going to be there too so I don't want to name their names just yet but uh, a lot of former Hawks are going to be in town and going to be hanging out with us too so come on out to that next so it's going to be a whole crazy week whole crazy week but either way appreciate all of you listening in and watching into the John Neighbor show be sure to like and subscribe to the show on iTunes Google Play YouTube Facebook all the places that you can finally find Natty State Sports we're blowing up we're popping baby we're popping but appreciate all of you listening and watching in Same sports show, same sports channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great rest of your day, folks. We'll see you then.